Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, before we get started, I do want to let you all know that tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern, I'll be debating some people on the topics of cancel culture, the George Floyd case, and I'm sure some other topics are going to pop up in there. But uh, that's going to be happening over at Rob Noir's channel. That's uh, Normal America with Rob Noir. So uh, head on over there, check out his channel. He's got a great channel. And uh, watch us tonight. It should be pretty interesting. So I wanted to tell you guys about this fact check that I found about a uh, CBS News story. And it's really a story that's been played throughout the media and a narrative that we've seen a lot of. I talk about it a lot on my channel about how the media, along with the Democrat Party, they will skew statistics, they will cherry pick data and cherry pick stories, all to uh, essentially scare minority populations into the waiting arms of the Democrat Party. And they want to frame you know, all the issues to where disagreeing with the Democrat Party is racist. They do this in part with this cherry pick data and uh, basically giving statistics without any context, uh, which gives people this idea that something is way more widespread than it actually is. And this is a great example of that. So what we have here is CBS News lies with statistics to overplay surge in Asian hate crimes. Uh, and this is an article by Ben Whitmore. Um, and the bullet points here are that there's an alleged 150% increase in anti-Asian incidents. And it's not as devastating as what it, what it seems. Uh, the actual numbers that are used is 73. So there's been 73 anti-Asian hate crimes. The liberal media overplays the study to prove systemic racism. Exactly. And that's, that's why you see the only national news stories of a cop shooting a person is only when it's a white cop and they shoot a black person. And then all those details, all the facts surrounding that don't matter. All that matters is the skin color of the people involved. And the media wants you to think that that, that that person was targeted because of their skin color. You know, they'll ignore all other details or downplay all other details that work against that narrative. Uh, but continuing, it says, study the fact, studying the fact sheet cited by the writer demonstrates that the liberal media's bias in reporting opinions as fact. Exactly. And so what they basically do is they'll show these statistics. Uh, they won't break it down per capita or, you know, compare it to the overall population of the United States to show just how actually rare it is. They'll just throw out these numbers. Uh, and I've talked about other examples of this. I've seen CBS News tweet out a wall, like a Vietnam War Memorial wall graphic of names of only African-Americans, uh, black Americans who were shot by police. And Nowhere in there is any detail of why they were shot, what happened, what they did to, to that led up to that happening. Nope. Just got to know that all these black people were shot and you can just assume that it was racism and systemic racism against black Americans. And that's exactly what's happening here, except for it's Asian Americans now. Continuing on here, circulating on liberal news sites has been a new study to be published later this month from the Center for the Study of Hate and Extremism that found, quote, a nearly 150% surge in anti-Asian hate crimes in 2020, while overall hate crimes fell by 7%. The numbers reflect a growing trend of discrimination against Asian Americans during the coronavirus pandemic. And something else about this is when you actually look at who's committing these hate crimes, it's mostly non-white people. It's uh, it's mostly black men, I believe, the majority of these attacks. But you'll what you'll find is that the media glosses over that and they just sort of blame Oh, well, it's not that these black people have any uh, of their own responsibility. They're all just acting because of white supremacy. And so they end up just blaming white people uh, for that. In reality, Smolensky omits crucial context and uses hyperbole to prove her own bias. So the major violations of this study uh, and this fact check are that there's missing context, there is opinion as fact, which <laughs> this is all so common in our media now, and uh, superficial investigation. Exactly. And that's what I mean by sort of glossing over the facts and details. They, they don't want to do any of that because doing that dilutes their narrative. There are two issues with this article. The first problem being is that is the 150% increase clearly lacks context. That would decrease concerns about anti-Asian racism in, in the U.S. Exactly. They don't want to decrease. They don't want to add context or, or give sort of the bigger picture. No, because that then... People might just be getting along. They might look for other solutions that weren't so extreme and divisive. You know, these far left Marxist communist groups wouldn't be able to push their agenda that way, which apparently is what the powers that be want now. Putting aside the fact that there's some variation in hate crime definition, this only meant that there was an increase of only 73 incidents reported since 2019. 
to extrapolate a broad trend of anti-Asian American racism in the U.S. on the basis of 73 or more incidents since 2019. Going from 49 to 122 incidents has a different meaning than going from 500 to 750. But this kind of hyperbole, words like surge and spike, is necessary to bolster the narrative. Precisely. They, with, without... Uh, the hyperbole, without cherry picking, without ignoring inconvenient data, without all those things, this whole narrative crumbles. And they're not able to, one, push this extreme agenda that they normally wouldn't be able to, and two, get Democrats into sole power uh, for the next hundred years. They couldn't do any of that without this narrative. They can't demonize the political their political opposition and the people who are speaking out trying to let the Americans know that they're being misled here. They can't call these people racist and white supremacists and all these these word bombs that they use. They can't do that without massaging all these facts, without lying by omission. Smolensky does not give us context or further investigation to the study. If she did, we might find that the 150% increase is not as devastating as it seems to be. Dennis Prager, who wrote an article about this particular fact sheet, gave us some perspective on this shockingly large percentage increase in anti-Asian racism. And what uh, Prager says here is dead on. I agree 100%. And it's what I talk about a lot in my videos when I talk about the fact that in 2020, there were around 250 black people shot by police. Okay, that's out of 40 million. That's after millions and millions of interactions throughout that year. So if this was an actual widespread, targeted, systemic problem, those numbers would be much higher, which, again, is why the media has to make it seem like it's higher. This is why they only uh, report on black uh, on certain police shootings and not on others, because, again, if they did that, it would dilute the narrative and it would crumble. Prager says, given that there are 330 million Americans and assuming a different American was responsible for each of the total 122 anti-Asian incidents, that would mean that one in every 2,704,918 Americans committed an anti-Asian incident. Exactly. It's exceptionally rare. And the amount of people actually engaged in this is extremely tiny and fringe, which is interesting, isn't it? Because what did we hear for years and years about Islamic terrorism? We heard that it's just a fringe minority. Of course, it was... It it came out to be uh, several million worldwide who um, who supported terrorism in the name of spreading Islam. So that's a lot of people. But we were told that it's just a fringe minority, not to worry. Well, in this case, it is a fringe minority, uh, and it's a tiny percentage of people that it's actually occurring to. So this fact checker tried to contact. Uh, so this fact checker tried to contact this fake journalist uh, through her three different emails that were listed on the stories, uh, but she failed to respond to them. Which isn't surprising because when I was still on Twitter, I would reach out to these reporters all the time and they very rarely would respond to me. Obviously because uh, what are they going to say? They're busted. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I got a busy day ahead of me. I uh, don't have a ton of time to edit a video today, which is why I'm doing this sort of off the cuff version of one of my videos. But I do want you all to hit that like button, share and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And make sure to check out the debate tonight at 8pm Eastern over at Normal America with Robert Noir's channel. <laughs>